Hmm. Good morning, Facebook Live Periscope. Good morning. It's 1.03 a.m. It's a good Friday, technically. Uh, I'll give you guys a couple minutes. I don't know who's up uh, at this hour. Um, I'm usually not up at this hour. Lady British is up. <laughs> good morning. Uh, share with your followers. Invite people to join us. I uh, just want to share with you a word that I feel the Lord has put in my spirit tonight, uh, this earlier tonight or whatever, last night. I was just thinking about some things driving to the store and um, I heard the word incubation and I've just been kind of tossing that around in my mind for the past couple of hours and felt inclined to just share on Facebook and on Periscope just to see who's... Um, available who's awake i'm not sure how many people are watching live how many people will watch later but listen i just want to share with you a word that i feel uh god will use to encourage uh some of you tonight uh or this morning with uh, a word that i feel uh will bring clarity to some and uh for some of you it may be a redundant word however I was looking at the term incubation. I was thinking about this. Brandon Barker. Hey, DJ Brandon, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Uh, bless you guys. Had a great time with you all on Sunday. Uh, thank you all for having us. Amen. Uh, Christian Unity, great place of fellowship. Uh, so I was thinking about the word incubation, and I looked it up. I, I know incubation most times, at least I connected to uh, babies, newborn babies, when they put them in. Uh, those incubators so that they can have the proper amount of light, the proper amount of heat, uh, give them that space, that isolation or that 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 time away uh, so that they can have those moments. And then I was thinking about the concept of isolation and comparing the two. And sometimes God brings us to places and seasons in our lives where uh, we don't always understand. God bless you, Pastor Terrell. Uh, we don't always understand where we are. We don't always understand why we're in the place that we're in. And a lot of times we uh, get into isolation. I was thinking about the prophet Elijah when he ran from Jezebel. That was a moment of isolation for him. And as I thought about it more and looked at so those definitions of isolation and incubation, isolation is a response that is usually connected to fear. Uh, to loneliness, to disparity, when things aren't going the way we feel they should go. And when we're hurting, we go and we tend to just get off and be to ourselves. The problem with isolation is that it is, uh, it is a direct result of running from the things that we have at hand. And so we feel like if I'm alone and nobody's bothering me, nobody's asking me questions, nobody's forcing me to deal with the thing that I'm dealing with, then I'll be okay. The danger in that, in isolation, is that when you're alone, God is always there. Yes, he's always with you, yeah. But when you're alone, uh, that that's really, really a place for the enemy to come in and to begin to deal with your mind, to deal with uh, where you are and what the enemy, all he needs is one small thought. And if you give the enemy a thought, he'll stretch your imagination and have you believing, conceiving, thinking of some of the wildest things that God never intended for you to experience, that God never intended for you to walk through in the course of your life. And so what you've got to understand is that when you feel moments of being isolated, you've got to turn those into moments of incubation. And now the difference is, again, I said isolation is, excuse me, is a result of fear. It comes from running. Uh, it, it, it gets you to a place where um, if I could just get here, nobody bothers me. I'm alone. The difference with incubation is that to incubate, it means to sit upon, to nest. If you think about birds, if you think about a baby, until the time of development, until the time of release, until the time of being ready. And I feel, uh, at least in my own walk right now, where I am in my journey, uh, that many of us are in a space of incubation where God is dealing with us in sight of the things that he has planned for us. A lot of times, if we're not careful, we move prematurely 
and we enter into things and we go without wisdom. We go without the anointing or the grace for that thing. It doesn't mean that God never called us to it. It doesn't mean that God never gave us the assignment for it. What it means is you go prematurely, then that means that we're not fully developed. And if you're not fully developed, you're premature. If we're going to go with incubation and the baby. And so we've got to be mindful of what we've got to be careful of is that in this season, we're not moving prematurely. Now, understand this. Sometimes from the incubator, you're looking at other people and you're examining what they're doing. You're wondering how they did it, how they got to where they are. And you're trying to figure that out. But I want to encourage you tonight to stay in the incubator. Allow God to make you develop. Allow him to release you. That may be on your job. It may be in ministry. It may be in marriage. You may be wanting to get married. You may be dating someone seriously. Um, and you're looking to move to the next step. You may be under a ministry wanting to launch out. You may be under a ministry looking to move up in that particular ministry. Whatever the case is, whatever uh, the scenario is, hello from Greece. Uh, good morning here in the U.S. Uh, whatever the issue is, allow God the time to develop you. Allow God that moment. Give him that season so um, you know what it is. I was just reading about Solomon. Solomon went into a dream. He has a dream. And uh, he, the Lord asked him, he says, ask me what you want. Ask me what should I do for you? And Solomon went through and he told him how he was grateful for all the things that he had blessed his father David to do. And he thanked God for choosing him to be the king in the place of his father, David. And so what he asked him for was understanding. He asked him for clarity. He asked him for directions on how to do the king thing the way God had intended for him to do. And the Lord responded to Solomon and said, because you have asked for this and not all of these other things, I'm going to give you this and more. God would have never asked Solomon that question. If he was not prepared for Solomon's answer. So if God were to ask you this morning, what will you ask him? What will you ask God for? Will you ask him for patience? Will you ask him for clarity? Will you ask him for wisdom? Will you ask him for grace and for an anointing? And when you ask God for those things, you got to allow him to incubate you. You've got to allow him to get you warmed, get you developed and get you prepared for your moment of release. And so I don't know who that word is for tonight. I'll develop this out a little bit later. Um, but I just want you to know that you are in a season of incubation. That means that there's something amazing inside of you. There's something great inside of you. And God is waiting for the right time to let you out. If you jump out of the nest now, you're going to fall. It's like birds. When the mother's push them out of the nest. They push them out of the nest at the time that they are capable of flying. The mothers are not on homicide or anything like that. They're not trying to kill their baby birds, but what they're doing is they're making sure that when they go, they're able to fly on their own. So don't say that you failed or weren't successful because it wasn't God's will. And a lot of times we lean on that crutch. We move before God. We move out of timing. We move out of season. And we say, well, it was the will of the Lord. And it was, the Lord wanted this. And it had to go this way in order for this to happen. All things work together. No, sometimes, most times, I venture to say we're moving prematurely. So allow God to fully develop you. Allow him to fully develop your muscles, your brain, the proper amount of oxygen. Your heart needs to be at a different place because for some of us, the things that God's taking us to, our hearts have got to be able to handle them. The things that God has designed for you to do and live in and work through, your body, your physical body has to be able to take hold of those things. So listen, be encouraged. Um, if you're awake, uh, go to bed soon. Some of you might be at work, working through the night. I don't know, but I'm getting ready to retire uh, for the day. But I just wanted to share that. Accept the season of incubation. Don't get in the rat trap of comparing yourself to other people, wondering why them and why not me? How could they and why can't I? And things of that nature. But allow God to have this time with you. Allow God to have this moment with you because he knows once he releases you, he knows what you're capable of. And in your incubation season, 
watch out for the enemy. The enemy will come through people. People will tell you that you're ready. People will push you. People will tell you that it's been too long. People will tell you that your faith is weak and that you're not stepping out in faith. The enemy will tell you that you're going to die in incubation because you're never going to be able to do what God has called you to do. The enemy will tell you that uh, you will be abandoned and rejected uh, and you may as well give up. Abandonment and rejection are, are what causes isolation. When we feel abandoned and rejected, then we go off, we get into this orphan mindset and we go off and we're to ourselves and there's nothing there to help us. Amen. So you've got to know that it's about incubation. It's preparation. And then after preparation, you're going to go, you're going to, you're going to receive illumination. God's going to give you revelation of exactly what he's calling for you to do. Let him incubate you so that he can put this in you. Solomon had a dream. Solomon had a dream. He was asleep. He was away. He wasn't in isolation in that moment. He was in incubation. And so when God is incubating you, that means that he's going to give you everything that you need. Everything that God has called you to do and be is already inside of you. I said this recently in a teaching that I did, that it's already there. And it's in different seasons of our lives that he's going to water or bring up those different things in their timing, in their timing. It's important that we understand the timing of the Lord. And so whatever season you're in that God's incubating, some things you're already moving in, some things you're flowing in, some things you're operating in, and you're doing it well. You're doing them wholeheartedly. They're working. They're successful. But there's this one thing or these few things that are still in incubation. Don't get out prematurely because what's happening is he's downloading in you. He's pouring into you. He's just seeping virtue. He's seeping wisdom. He's seeping strength. And while you're figuring that you're missing on things because you're in incubation, you're actually being filled with things. You're actually being infused with the things that you're going to need to sustain you from this incubation time until the next incubation time. And so you've got to let him do it. And in the process of incubation, you're going to get revelation and illumination so that when you come out, you'll be able to look back and you'll be saying, aha, I get it. Aha, I understand. And as things go on and as things unfold, the revelation of God will bring much clarity to where you are in that space. So listen, don't give up. Don't jump out. Don't abort. Let God finish the work. Remember, the Bible says he that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it until the day of Christ. So whatever area in your life that you feel is dormant or an incubation that God is developing, don't go into isolation. Don't run and hide because you don't see the end. Don't run and hide because you don't fully understand the work of God in your life. Some things God is not ready to release to you the full understanding and the full wisdom. This is where you rely on your faith. This is where you rely on your testimony of what God has already done for you. So listen, people of God, rest in this, that God is developing areas in our lives. He's developing areas of ministry. He's developing entrepreneurship in many of you. He's developing uh, business plans. He's developing community development plans. He's developing churches. He's developing parachurch ministries. He's developing all kinds of things for the next move that he's getting ready to do. And so if you want to be a part of it, Stay in the incubator and let him do what he's calling you to do or what he's doing in you so that you can fulfill the call of God on your life. Now, it's not easy. Trust me, I understand. It is not easy. Transition brings about challenge and challenge and transition bring about a process. But you have to go through the process so that you can come out and be the product. You want to be the product of God's workmanship. That's what you want to be. The process gets the product.
Remember that the process will get the product and you want to be everything that God has called you to be. So I've shared that. That's what's in my heart. I'm going to sleep with that. Uh, chew on that in my sleep. Perhaps God will give me a dream tonight. I'm not sure. Uh, but listen, I want you all to be encouraged. Uh, we're celebrating the resurrection of our of our Savior, of our Lord, of our Redeemer, uh, Jesus Christ. We're honoring him. It's Good Friday. Uh, it's the day that we set aside to celebrate his uh, crucifixion. Coming up on Sunday is the day that we celebrate on our calendar as his resurrection. So while you're incubating, hey, we could even go with that. Jesus incubated for three days in that tomb, but he wasn't sitting there waiting to be developed. He, was, he wasn't sitting there resting. He went to hell. He set the captives free. He got the keys to death in the grave. He conquered the enemy and he got up with all power in his hand. So when you get out, you're going to come out with some power. You're going to come out with some authority. You're going to come out with some anointing. You're going to come out with some greatness on you. So go through it, suffer through it, hang on in there and know that the end of your situation is going to be greater than the beginning. So you all have a wonderful morning. Uh, get you some rest. Enjoy whatever you do to celebrate uh, Good Friday, whether that's church, whether it's family, uh, whether it's friends, whatever you do to honor Christ uh, today. Do it wholeheartedly and do it as unto the Lord and be safe this weekend. Don't eat too many eggs. Uh, don't eat the dye. Peel the eggs after you dye them. Uh, enjoy your children. Enjoy your family um, and live life. And if you're not uh, doing anything tomorrow that will hinder you from joining us, uh, we will be, my wife, Lady British, and I will be on our um, weekly broadcast, Let's Do Life, uh, www.ChristFamilyRadio.com. We can find them, CFAN, Christ Family Radio, on the TuneIn app. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to catch us on Facebook Live uh, there from the studio. That's tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Until next time, peace and favor, and God bless you.